Okay, so we continue on 5C Everyday English. Can't you call me back? We're going to learn to leave a voicemail message and ask for someone on the phone. A voicemail is when you call someone and he or she doesn't answer. Cuando llamas a alguien y no responde, you leave a voicemail. We're going to learn how to ask someone to wait and sound and spelling of a of the letter a so the first part listening if you phone a friend if you phone a friend and there is no answer what do you usually do leave a message send them a text or call again later llamar de vuelta otra vez call again later llamar después and say why Now we continue, watch or listen to part one, and which two people leave messages? Dan, Annie, or Leo? Hi Dan, it's Annie. Can you call me back? You can call me on my work number or my mobile. Thanks. Hi, it's Annie. I'm not here right now. You know what to do after the tone. Have a nice day. Hi Annie, uh, I got your message. Uh, I'm here at my desk now. Uh, could you call me back? Bye. Okay, so the two people who left a message were Dan and Nanny. Now watch or listen to part one again. Are the sentences true or false? Annie tells Dan to only call her on her mobile. Solo llamarle en su teléfono, on her mobile. And Dan tells Annie where he is. Le dice dónde está. Are these true or false? Number one is false. She tells Dan to call her on her work number or her mobile. And number two is true. Dan tells Annie where he is. He is at his desk. Now useful language. Leaving a voicemail message. Which sentences do Dan or Annie say? And which are on their voicemail? En su buzón de voz on their voicemail. Please leave a message after the tone. Can you call me back? Could you call me back? You can call me on my work number or my mobile. I'm not here right now. Hi, Dan. It's Sunny. Now watch or listen to part one again and check your answers in 2A. So you need to go back to the video. Necesitan regresarse al video. You need to go back to the video and answer this part. Once you're finished, we check. Number one is the voicemail. Please, uh, please leave a message after the tone. Por favor, deja un mensaje después del tono. It's a really famous phrase. Es una frase muy famosa. This one. After that, Annie. Then, Dan. Can you call me back? Call back. Llamar de vuelta. O regresar la llamada. Can you call me back? You can call me on my work number or my mobile. You can call me. Puedes llamarme. Y él está dando las opciones. Voicemail. I'm not here right now. And Annie. Hi, Dan. It's Annie. So, it's Annie. Okay. Now, complete the voicemail message and then colors message with the words in the box. Listen and check. We have the voicemail and we have the color. Track 2.64 Hello, 
this is Alex. Sorry, I'm not here just now. Please leave a message and I'll call you later. Hi, it's Pam. Could you call me back? You can call me at work. Okay, so here we have some phrases that we can use when we want to have a voicemail. Algunas frases que, que podemos tener cuando dejamos un buzón de voz. Cuando tenemos un buzón de voz. First the name, hello. This is Alex. Para ver que no se equivoquen las personas. This is Alex. Sorry, I'm not here. I'm not here just now. El por qué no pueden contestar. Sorry, I'm not here just now. Tal vez salió y dejó su teléfono. Please leave a message. Por favor, dejo un mensaje. Please leave a message and I'll call you later. Te llamaré después. I'll call you later. The caller, la persona que llama. Cuando llamas y te quedas hasta el buzón de voz es que es algo muy importante. Entonces, por eso es que puedes dejar algunas, algún mensaje. Hi, it's Pam. Could you call me back? El de could you call me back, can you call me back, es para decir, puedes llamar, puedes devolverme la llamada. Y le dicen dónde lo pueden llamar. You can call me at work, you can call me on my phone. Now the next exercise, work in pairs, use the dialogue map to leave a message and take turns being A and B. Person A, phone B, le llama a B, pero B doesn't answer. So, give your voicemail message, that's tu mensaje del buzón de voz. And after that, A is going to leave a message. We continue listening. Put events A to E in the order they happened. Watch or listen to part 2 and check your answers. ¿Qué es lo que creen que haya pasado primero? First, Dan goes to make coffee. After that, what happened then? Okay, so we see the video and check. Would you like a coffee? Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Dan. Dan's phone. Oh, hello. Is Dan there? Uh, sorry, he's not here just now. He went to get coffee. Oh. It's his sister, Annie. Can he call me back? Hi, Annie. It's uh, Leo. Leo? Oh, Leo. Hi. Can you wait a minute? Uh, he'll be back soon. Sure. So, Leo, how are you? I'm... I'm really well. Uh, what about you? Oh, great. Just great. Oh, good. That's, um, great. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Uh, it's Annie. Oh, good. Uh, just a minute. He's uh, got coffee for us. Lucky you. There you are. Uh, bye, Annie. Bye. Thanks. Bye, Annie. It's me. Dan, finally. Uh, you left a message? Yes, that's right. I need your help with something. Okay, so the first thing, Dan goes to make coffee and what happened next? ¿Qué pasó después? What happened next? See, Leo answers the phone. After that, Annie chats to Leo. Annie talks to Leo. Annie chats. It's the same. Talk to chat. It's an informal conversation. Then, Dan brings some coffee. Dan talks to Annie. Okay, now answer the questions. What do Leo and Annie talk about? How they are, the weather, or work? 
and how does Leo feel? They talk about how they are. And Leo, maybe he is shy, nervous, and embarrassed. Maybe because he likes Annie. That's what I think. I think Leo likes Annie. Now useful language. It says asking for someone on the phone. Preguntar por alguien en el teléfono. Asking for someone on the phone. Look at Annie's questions and Leo's answers. Underline the correct words. Then watch or listen to part two again and check your answers. Is Anne here or there? He's not here or there just now. Can he, can he call me again or back? He'll be back or there soon. What are the correct answers? Okay, we check. Is Dan there? Porque estamos diciendo que está en el mismo lugar que la persona que contestó. Is Dan there? ¿Está Dan ahí? Ah, entonces, como estamos en el mismo lugar, he's not Here, él no está aquí. He's not here right now. Can he call me back? ¿Me puede regresar la llamada? Porque si utilizáramos el again, es como si nos hubiera llamado, no podemos contestar y le decimos, puedes llamarme otra vez después. Pero como nosotros somos los que llamamos, entonces... Vamos a estar utilizando el back para que nos regrese la llamada cuando pueda. Y aquí, he'll be back soon. Estará de vuelta pronto o regresará pronto. Now, working pairs and use the dialogue Mac to ask for someone and take turns being A and B. Student A, phone student B. You want to speak to another student. ¿Quieres hablar con otro estudiante? You want to speak to another student. B. Answer and say that he or she isn't here. And then, student A, ask him, her, to call you back. Is my partner there? Uh, no, she or he is not here just now. Uh, can he call me back? So you need to copy the dialogue, but with the names of one of your partners. Con el nombre de alguno de tus compañeros. Now, conversation skills. Asking someone to wait. Complete the conversation with the words in the box. We have just, wait, and two times, minute. Okay, can you wait a minute? He'll be back soon. Sure. It's Annie. Oh, good. Just a minute. What does a minute mean in the conversation? ¿Qué significa a minute? Exactly one minute or a short time. A short time. ¿Cuándo es que decimos estas frases? ¿Cuándo le pedimos a alguien que espere? Asking someone to wait. Maybe when we are busy, cuando estamos ocupados. When we are doing another thing, cuando estamos haciendo otra cosa. Cuando alguien no está y le decimos que espere. Ok, entonces son algunos casos de lo que pudiera... Eh, utilizarlo, por ejemplo, si les piden su trabajo y ustedes siguen en ello, ah, pueden decir ah, just a minute entonces en un periodo corto de tiempo lo van a entregar a short time cuando les pregunten que si ya van a terminar su examen ah, just a minute now pronunciation sound and spelling A Listen to the sound of the letter A in the words below. Sound 1, sound 2, sound 3, and so, sound 4. Van a ver cómo se pronuncian cada una de estas. 
Y las van a tener que repetir, lo dicen en repeat. Track 2.66. 1. Thanks. Thanks. 2. Call. Call. 3. Message. Message. 4. Later. Later. Okay, now what sound do the marked letters have in the words in the box? Add them to the groups in 6A and then listen and check. Talk, village, wait, tall, back, luggage, voicemail, same, Small, table, and black. ¿Qué sonido tienen? One, two, three, or four. De los que les acabo de mencionar. Ok. Listen and check. Track 2.67. Sound 1. Thanks. Back. Black. Back and black. Sound 2. Call. Talk. Talk. Tall. Tall. Small. Small. Sound three. Message. Message. Village. Village. Luggage. Luggage. Sound four. Later. Later. Wait. Wait. Voicemail. Voicemail. Same. Same. Table. Table. Now work in pairs. Cover the table in 6A. A student A say a word from 6B and a student B say a word that has the same sound and then so rolls. So you need to cover this part. Tienen que cubrir esta parte. You need to cover this part. And you need to say one word and to try to remember the sound. Tienen que recordar el sonido y una palabra que sea similar. For example, talk. Talk. ¿Qué tipo de sonido tiene? Ok. Now we continue in speaking. Listen and complete the phone conversation. Track 2.68 Hello, Sue Parker. Hi, Sue. It's Nick. Is Melanie there, please? No, sorry. She's not here just now. She's at her Spanish class. Do you want to leave a message? No, it's okay. Can she call me back? Okay, I'll tell her. Thanks. She can call me on my mobile. Okay, just a minute. I need to find a pen to write the number. It's okay. She knows my number. Hello? Hi, Nick. It's Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Sue says you phoned. Yes, that's right. Do you want to meet on Friday? We can go for a meal. Yes, I'd love to. Okay, so we check. These are the answers. When we talk on the phone, cuando hablamos por teléfono, solemos decir it o this is. This is Nick o it's Nick. Eh, se suele decir que es una manera más formal de presentarte cuando estás por el teléfono. This is Nick o it's Nick. En su caso, utilizarían su nombre, obviamente, como lo harían. Ok. She's not here. Do you want to leave a message? Leave a message, recuerden, dejar un mensaje. Call me back. She can call me on my mobile. Just a minute. Lo que habíamos visto de esperar, just a minute. Hi Nick, it's Melanie, lo que les decía. 
utilizamos it's o this is para introducirte, para presentarte en el teléfono. Su says you found. Este es un verbo regular, entonces le agregamos la mala the font. Now you're ready to take the unit progress test. You can now do the unit progress test. We continue on 16 skills for writing. Five months later, we got married. We're going to learn to write a life story linking ideas in the past listen and speaking choose two important years in your life and make notes about what happened in each year for example here 1995 started a school puede ser eh, que hayan entrado a una escuela si quieren poner su nacimiento está bien si conocieron a alguien importante si empezaron a practicar un hobby, algo que sea importante en su vida. Two important years in your life. And tell your partners what happened in your two important years. Now, the years below were important in Eva's life. What do you think happened and match phrases with the years? Listen and check. We have 1982, 1995, 2000, 2007, and 2010. We got, got a job as a teacher, went to live in the USA, moved, se mudó, moved to Germany, was born, and met her husband. Track 2.69. Okay, well, 1982 was a very important year for me. I was born in that year. I was born in a small town in the north of Colombia. My whole family lived there. My parents, my grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, everyone. It's a very nice place, very hot, tropical. I really loved it. And then 1995 was a very important year. Everything changed. My parents moved to the USA. My father got a job in Minnesota. So we went to live in the USA, and I went to school there. I learned English quite quickly. In 2000, I got my first job. I was a school teacher. I taught small kids, six to ten years old. It was great. Then, in 2007, I met Nico. He's my husband. He's German, but we met in the USA, and then in 2010, I moved to Germany to be near him. And we got married last year. And then I found a job. I teach English to business people. So here I am today. Okay, so we check. 1982, she was born. In 1985, she went to live in the USA. In 2000, she got a job as a teacher. In 2007, she met her husband. In 2010, she moved to Germany. Now underline the correct answers and listen again and check. So this is part of the conversation. You need to complete it. And once you're finished, You can go back to the video. Pueden regresarse del video. Bueno, a la parte del audio. And check. So, she was born in a small or large town in Colombia. She went to the USA alone or with her parents. She taught young children or teenagers. She went to Germany to get a job or to be near Nico, her husband. Okay, she was born in a small town in Colombia. She went to USA with her parents. She taught young children. And she went to Germany to be near Nico. Now, write two more important years in your life. Tell your partners 
Only the Years, dile a tus compañeros solo el año. En qué es What Happened in Your Partner's Years. Entonces tenemos el año, van a tener que identificar qué evento sucedió en ese año. Ok. We continue. Reading. Look at the lifetime. This is a lifetime. We start in 1985, 1990, 1984, and here we have now. So, um, put the sentences A to F about church in the correct order. We have, when I was 11, we moved to London and I went to a school third. ¿Dónde pudieran ponerlo? In South Africa, I met Carolina and we got married a few months later. A year later, I went to university in London and I studied engineering. I was born in 1984 in Edinburgh, Scotland. It's number one. Then, in 2010, I got a job as an engineer in South Africa. I left the school in 2010. 2002 and I got job in a bank. Okay, so we've got the first. Tenemos la primera ya. I was born in 1984 in Edinburgh, Scotland. Number two, when I was 11, we moved to London and I went to school there. Three. I left school in 2002 and I got a job in a bank. A year later, I went to university in London and studied engineering. Then in 2010, I got a job as an engineer in South Africa. Primero tuvo que estudiar ingeniería para después conseguir un trabajo de ingeniero. In South Africa, I met Carolina and we got married a few months later. That's the last thing. He got married. Now, writing skills. Linking ideas in the past. Complete sentences too, so that it means the same as one. Tienen que completar... Con una palabra para que signifique lo mismo que aquí. The word is when. Podemos decir in 1985, el año y lo que pasó. O podemos decir la edad que teníamos. When I was 11, uh -huh. we moved to London, I went to school there. Como pueden ver, utilizamos estas expresiones. Después ponemos una coma y, que con y continuamos con lo que sucedió. Now complete the sentences with in or when. I left the school when I was 18. In 2003, I went to university in London. When I was in South Africa, I worked as an engineer. Entonces vamos a utilizar in para el tiempo en específico, in 2003, in June, in July. Sin embargo, vamos a estar utilizando when cuando estamos hablando de nosotros. When I was, cuando yo estaba o cuando yo tenía. When I was 18, when I was in South Africa. Como tal, esta es una frase completa, when I was. O puede también utilizarlo de otra persona, when she was. When he was, when they were. Okay, which word in or when do we use with cheers in longer sentences? Utilizamos in con los años. In to, uh, 2003. And when in longer sentences, en oraciones más largas. Now here, complete the sentences that are true for you. And write when you did each thing using in or when. 
tenemos Started School. Pueden utilizar cualquiera de estas dos. In or when. When I was 16, I started school. I left the school. In 2017, I left the school. Si ya fueron a la universidad, si ya conocieron a su esposa, esposo, o tal vez un amigo. Got my first job. Went on a plane. I had my first phone or computer. Okay, now complete sentence two, so that it means the same as one. ¿Qué palabra podemos utilizar para que signifique lo mismo que la de arriba? La palabra es later. Como podemos ver, es justamente un año después. Entonces, I left the school in 2003. In 2004, I went to university. I left the school in 2003. A year, a year later, un año después, a year later, I went to university. Significa lo mismo. Y aquí vamos a ver. Change the underlined expression using a time expression plus later. Aquí tenemos. Este, in 2008. Y aquí tenemos in 2010. ¿Cuánto tiempo pasó? ¿Fue a year later o fue más? Ok, aquí tenemos I met Carolina, Carolina in January 2011. In June 2011, we got married. ¿Cuánto tiempo pasó? ¿Un año? ¿Un año después? ¿One year later? ¿Dos meses? ¿Two months later? Aquí tenemos We got married in June 2011, in June 2014, we had our first child. ¿Cuánto tiempo pasó? Ok, recuerden estar utilizando la expresión del tiempo. Un mes, dos meses, tres años, cuatro semanas, tal vez. Y utilizar la palabra later, después. And write two sentences in the past about you or someone in your family. Use later in the second sentence. For example, I came to the UK in January 2014. Three months later, I found a job. Entonces van a tener que pensar en cuatro eventos de su vida para tomarlo en dos oraciones. Read or Read out your sentences, but the stuff after a word later, and can your partners guess how they end? Van a tener que decir las oraciones que hayan hecho, pero se van a detener en la parte later. Y sus compañeros van a tener que adivinar cómo es que termina. I came to the UK in January 2014. Three months later, you bought a flat. Compraste un apartamento, you bought a flat. Lo que sus compañeros van a pensar de cómo terminó. We continue writing and speaking. Think about someone in your family. Draw a timeline like George and not notes. Write a life story from your notes using he or she. Don't write the name of the person or say what your relation to the person is. Van a tener que hacer algo como esto. Pero en vez de decir el nombre de la persona, van a estar utilizando him. He was born in 1997. He went to university in 2014. Swap life stories with another student and guess who the people are. Van a tener que intercambiarlo y adivinar quién es la persona de la que están hablando. Read your partner's life story again and check how ideas are linked in the past. Van a tener que revisar cómo fueron unidas las ideas. Si utilizaron in, si utilizaron when, si utilizaron later. And we finished with the unit 6 review and extension. Complete the conversation with the correct form of the verb B. Use contraction if possible.
Entonces van a tener que identificar si es presente, si es pasado, if it's positive, if it's negative, if it's a question. Ok, si es singular, si es plural. Complete the text with the correct past simple form of the verb in brackets. When I, what is the past of B? I child, I want, what is the past for want? Complete the sentences with the present simple or the past simple form of the verb in brackets. Now here you need to check if it's present or past. Last night, it's a expression for present or for past. Uh, last weekend, is it a pres is an expression for present or past? On Tuesday nights, she usually, son expresiones para presente o pasado. Ok, now vocabulary, complete the text with the correct family words. Peter and Barbara are my father's parents, so they are my los padres de tu padre, ¿qué serían? I'm very close to my Bárbara. ¿Cómo se le llamaría ella? And to my Peter, ¿cómo se le llama a él? And write the date in words. Here we have 25, pero en fecha sería the 25th, porque utilizamos los números ordinales. The 25th of, agregamos of, el mes, December. Y cómo se dice este número. Recuerden que con los números del 2000, no, del 1999 para atrás, lo podemos dividir en dos, en pares, 1982. Y del 2000 para adelante, lo decimos como debería de ser, 2000. Uh -huh. We continue with the word power go. Vamos a estar aprendiendo cómo cambia el significado, cómo se ajusta el significado de go con diferentes preposiciones. Here, read the conversation and answer the questions. I need to go home now. It's hot and I feel tired. I can drive you. Puedo llevarte a casa. I can drive you. No, no, I can go by bus. Are you sure? Yes, I need to go shopping on the way home. The supermarket is next to the bus stop. Do you want to go for a swim later on? Yes, that'd be nice. And after that, I'd really like to go out to a restaurant. Sounds like a good idea. Who's got a car? ¿Quién tiene un carro? Who's got a car? Sara o Viv. ¿En what plans do Sara and Viv have for later on? ¿Qué planes tienen para después? Viv has a car. And they go for a swim and to go out to a restaurant. Ok, entonces, match the mark phrases in 3A with meanings A to E. Go home, ¿qué significado tiene? Go by, go shopping, go for, and go out. Ok, we check. A, travel by, viajar por, ir por, go by, bus. Recuerden que aquí pueden utilizar cualquier medio de transporte. Go by car. Go by taxi, go by plane. En este caso, go by bus. Utilizamos el by para determinar por qué medio de transporte vamos a ir. B is for go for. Uh -huh. ir, por un, ir a nadar. O have a swim later. También podemos utilizar go for a walk. Go for a coffee, go for a meal. Pero lo que dice es que van a tener. Aquí que van a tener. Ok. Sí. 
go home, leave and return to where I live. Dejar el lugar donde estás y regresar a casa. Go home. Buy some things. ¿Con cuál de estas pueden este, decir que van a comprar algo? Go shopping. Go shopping. You need to buy some things. You go shopping. Okay, leave home and do something fun. Hacer algo divertido. Go out. Que en este caso sería salir. I'd like to go out. Me gustaría salir to a restaurant. Now, match one to four with A to D to make more phrases with go. Go to, go by, go for, go out. Tenemos train, to the cinema, a party, and a walk. We check. Go to a party. Go by train, el medio de transporte. Go to, el lugar a donde van a ir. Go to a party. Go for a walk. Dar una caminata, tener una caminata. Go for a walk. For B, go out to the cinema. ¿A dónde van a ir? Al cinema. Go out. Now correct the mistake in the sentences. They want to go to home. Tienen que estar revisando si están bien escritas, si se están utilizando bien las preposiciones. Ok, you can check all these to find the answers. Ok, we check. Here, in the first, go home. Como tal, ya es una frase, go home, ir a casa. No se necesita agregar el to. Nada más decimos go home. Y number two. Go shopping. Sin el for. Utilizamos go. Y algunas actividades que terminen ing. No necesitamos agregar ninguna otra palabra. Go shopping. Go swimming. Go skateboarding. Ok. I'd like to go to de cinema aquí sí estamos agregando el to para determinar que vamos a ir a ese lugar go to de cinema would you like to go for a coffee porque es lo que van a tener for a coffee que van a tener un coffee he usually goes To work by bus. Utilizamos by cuando son los medios de transporte, no for. For cuando vamos a tener algo. Por ejemplo, aquí el café. Now, write sentences about your life using phrases with go. Aquí tenemos go home, go shopping, go a city center, by, Go out to, go for a walk in. Por ejemplo, la primera. Every day I usually go home y la hora. At 5 and 30 p.m. Each week I go shopping. ¿A dónde van a comprar? Go shopping. Often go. I often go to the city center. By. ¿Cómo van al city center? By bus, by taxi. By, by car. By bike. This evening would like to go out to. ¿A dónde les gustaría go out? Sometimes go for a walk in. How do you walk, go for a walk? ¿En dónde van por una caminata? In the park. In the... In the sports center. Y pues esto me lo tendrían que mandar porque son sus propias respuestas. Now review your progress. How well did you do in this unit? Write three, two or one for each objective. What can you do now and how well can you do it? ¿Qué pueden hacer y qué también lo pueden hacer? So that's everything for today. And it's the last of the unit.